Hey everyone and welcome to Inner Sanctum, the internet's one and only dark ambient vlog, and I am your host, my name is Joe. So it's been a while between episodes as per usual, and uh, there's been a lot going on, just uh, haven't really had a lot of motivation to get in front of the camera too much, but uh, I've kind of decided for the future all these episodes are going to be a lot shorter, and I know some people really enjoyed the longer, like hour long format that I've done for the past several episodes, but to me it just... I think just to make things more digestible, it's going to be, make more sense to do shorter episodes. So I'm thinking in the future, everything's going to be probably around the 15 to 20 minute range tops, just to uh, kind of get the episodes out more and cover more ground and just, you know, get more artists featured on here and, you know, just, just get more episodes out and kind of spread the word on what I'm doing here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, some of the releases are, well, actually a lot of stuff I'm going to review in the next uh, several episodes. It's going to be older stuff because, uh, Quite frankly, I just don't really have money to uh, pay for new releases. I just had to pay $700 for a surgery bill for my cat, and uh, obviously my little critter takes priority over CD hoarding, and uh, it's tough, but you know, it's, I mean, it's hard being a music hoarder, collector, or whatever you want to call me, and not have money, but it's just, every once in a while, you just kind of got to get to get to that point where you face reality and just, you know, be like, dude, you got to pay bills, stop buying vinyl and CDs and tapes. And care of business. So, kind of where I'm at right now, and uh, it's frustrating, but, you know, got lots to enjoy here, several more CDs behind me, and all kinds of vinyl I've stashed away that you never see on these uh, videos either, but, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about some older stuff mostly, and as much as I would love, just go on, like, Cryo Chambers website and check out some of their newer stuff, because I, like, literally haven't checked out any of the stuff they released in the past year. I just, uh, the money's not there, and I don't have any money just for any other labels or anything really either, so it's just frustrating but this is what we're going to do and uh, it'll be cool though because these are releases you may not have heard, you may have overlooked these and some of these may be readily available on like say Discogs or eBay and some of these might be hard uh, hard to find out of print and maybe very pricey but regardless most of this stuff is probably going to be on my channel anyway or somewhere else on YouTube so you can check it out and uh, without further ado let's go. Up First is a project that originated in Italy back in 2002 and debuted with an EP called Prophet. The project in question is New Risen Throne, the solo project of Gabriel Panchi, otherwise known as Steel, who has been for almost 20 years now creating utterly bleak dark ambient soundscapes, and since 2002 it has become something of a pretty much a household name in the dark ambient genre, and to some even a legendary and classic composer in this subgenre. Uh, New Risen Throne, New Risen Throne for me is a project that uh, I first got into back in 2005 when God is Myth Records released a split split between New Risen Throne and Cruel Harvest. Both projects were completely unknown to me at the time, and uh, I, at the time, I was kind of going through a weird phase where I wasn't a really uh, totally keen on like really bleak, ominous, dark ambient music. I was still kind of hung up on like the the more melodic variety of stuff that had piano or just, you know, more memorable synth melodies or even, you know, stuff comparable to like Mortis or the, the first uh, Northon album, stuff like that. Stuff that just, you know, had more character, I guess you could say. Not to say this music doesn't have character, but this was the first release that really made me like kind of open up my eyes to that more bleak, ominous, and just, you know, uh, free-flowing style of just dark ambient music, which nowadays I absolutely love. So the release in question is New Risen Throne and Cruel Harvest's Shadows Over Humanity, which as I already said was released back in 2005 on God is Myth Records. I got my hands on this record back then because I was doing my zine called Lunar Hypnosis and Todd from uh, God is Myth Records, also Cruel Harvest, sent me the CD for a review and uh, as I recall way back then I absolutely loved it. and. Uh, it was a record that, as I said, kind of opened my eyes to the other side of dark ambient music, and it's a record that uh, I started to really associate with other things, like, while wow, listening to dark ambient music. For example, I would start reading while listening to this album. I, this was the first dark ambient album I put in my car on rainy days, or just gloomy overcast guys, and everything was just fucking miserable outside. It was also one of those albums that I first put on like when I wanted to sleep or when I was hungover shit and just needed to chill out but needed that sort of ominous music in the background just to kind of settle my mind and put me in a peaceful place. This was that record and uh, although probably in the grand scheme of things it's not really that important to New Risen Throne or really the scene in general, it is a solid record that I would highly have to you know recommend you guys check out. But 
As I said, this was my introduction to the world of New Rhythm Throne. He already had, a, uh, Gabriel already had a couple of releases before this. Um, a couple of splits and EPs, which were all, I'm assuming, uh, pretty much really, you know, limited and, you know, hard to get. And they were on uh, labels I've never heard of, like Alarm Echo Beats. I don't, and like, I never really heard of these labels and, you know, what they, what they were doing back then or what became of them. I'm assuming they're long gone. And uh, it's kind of important to note that, that God is Myth Records itself was more or less a black metal label. When it first started, it was definitely, you know, more rooted in uh, raw black metal. And then it kind of, over time, started inviting more artists in the dark ambient scene. There was, I remember there being a Dungeon Synth album they always released back then on a time frame. There was like some weird folk stuff, and uh, but mostly centered on black metal and heavy metal stuff was what the God's Myth record specialized. So, you know, releasing a dark ambient record when you're a label, so, you know, they have that, or even have that sort of style, you know, or, you know, for, you know, no one has been on black metal, you're always kind of taking a chance. And uh, Todd took a hell of a chance with this one, but it was also because his own project, Cruel Harvest, was involved, so he and I had to find something to work with. And, uh, like I said, this is a really great record, and uh, it's always stuck out with me for, you know, just being a uh, simple affair, but really having just this massive deep sound to it. The Risen Throne offers up three songs on this album, and they're all very long length, all over ten minutes long, and, uh, like I said before, this is really ominous, bleak, just unsettling, just atmospheric landscape ambient music. This is the kind of stuff where, you know, I, I, I've said it before, but, but you know, there's that really nightmarish vibe of this kind of stuff, and like, you know, the images that are on the cover, like you see here, like, they really just come to life as... like heavy metal, they're not going to get this kind of because they're always kind of searching for like that song element, that verse, chorus, verse thing, or that melodic character, and you don't get that in this kind of music, at least this style of dark ambient music, so it's special that when, you know, even though all that's absent, and there's still, it's just so rich with atmosphere, and it's just, uh, it's an immense release, and like I said before, this was my introduction to New Risen Throne, and uh, I've been a massive fan, you know, ever since, and I've, uh, trying to track down all of his releases but some of the ones on like cyclic law are a little more expensive because they're still like kind of only exist as like imports and stuff like that and some of the earlier eps which i mentioned are a bit hard to track down too although they were recently uh, collected in a massive like four or five cd box set that was released by a russian label called infant fog productions 
but again, it's a, it's a foreign label, so again, you kind of get into that, that, that territory where you're paying like 50 bucks for this box set, and although it's tempting, I, you know, have to be realistic and uh, spend my money mostly wisely, right? <laughs> Um, anyway, the last uh, New Risen Throne album came out back in 2012, and it's been quite a great deal of time since uh, Gabriel released anything, although he's appeared on occasional compilations here and there. Even uh, even myself, I had the honor of appearing on a compilation with him a couple of years ago, which was pretty fucking cool, I have to admit, because he is something of like a dark ambient hero to me, so it was really cool that that, that happened. But uh, other than that, he's got a new album coming out on Cyclic Law after almost a 10-year wait, and uh, as I said, 2002 was the beginning of this project, and it's, he's been around for almost 20 years at this point, so uh, this is a project that I absolutely give my highest endorsement to, so definitely check out New Risen Throne. On the split side of this release, we have a project called Cruel Harvest, which, as I already mentioned, was a project of Todd Paulson from the God is Myth label. But also at the time, Todd was also involved in a project called Uval, which was basically raw lo-fi black metal, which you could probably compare to something like Dark Thrones, Transylvanian Hunger, or Panzerfaust era. Really minimal, simple black metal, and I liked it, but it was pretty limited because I just never really been into that particular style of music, or that particular style of black metal too much, unless it was, it's really riff heavy or something like that, which, I mean, Todd had some cool riffs, but it just didn't really resonate with me as well. But uh, by the time he would do his second release, he would kind of, you know, start adding more, like, kind of, I guess I would say more, like, kind of progressive tendencies and folk and acoustic tendencies to his music. So it got better, and from there he went on to a project called Dormant, and he had a one-off kind of post-rock project called Celestial Sea, and then around 2010 he started a project called Canis Duras, which was more, like, uh, kind of, like, I guess a lot of people call it depressive black metal, but it didn't really have like that Burzimus vibe so much. But it was more, it was, again, there was still like some acoustic and progressive and those kind of tendencies in the music. And they released two albums, uh, I think in 2010 and 2012, and the project went on hold for many years. And actually, I think later this month, the new album's finally coming out. And uh, just to give uh, the album a little, uh, you know, poke in the right direction or something, I don't know. I also did a little intro for this album because me and Todd have been in contact again uh, uh, these past couple of years and it's, uh, it was really an honor for me to be on that album. But I'm really diverging and talking about all the shit that's happening nowadays and after this album. So let's go back to the 2005, let's talk about Cruel Harvest. Then. Cruel Harvest offers up four songs here and they are, again, kind of comparable to New Risen Throne style, although there's a, a slight case of more melodicism and there's also a bit of, of uh, experimentation here and there. Um, these are really good songs, I like them a lot, and I really wish Ty would have created more with this project. It's a bit of a shame, really, because I think he was onto something special. It would have been great to hear a full-length album, but that just never happened for whatever reason. Lack of time, or lack of interest, who knows, but it just never happened. So it would have been cool if he would have released a full album, but nevertheless, these four songs pair up quite well with New Risen Thrones, four, uh, three songs, and, uh, now again, this is a solid release, which you can grab for probably 10 bucks or less, maybe, you know, I don't know, it's well worth checking out, Phil, and uh, like I said, it was my introduction to New Risen Throne, and uh, for that, I'm pretty grateful, and, you know, thank you, Todd, for sending this film to me 15 years ago, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you got me going on a project I absolutely love nowadays, so that's fucking awesome, and uh, hope you do more uh, music in the style someday, too, and, well, actually, I should say that he is, because he started. He just recently started a folk ambient project, which I can't remember now off the top of my head, but I will post a link right around here so you can check that out. But yeah, he's doing more folk and acoustic kind of stuff now too, as well as the Canis Duras album, which is coming out soon. So check it out when it's here, and uh, yeah, this is a great record. Shadows over humanity. All right, let's check this album out. So as I said earlier, it's just this is really bleak ass picture on the cover and you know again I believe it's a, a bombing from World War II but man I mean just just look at the devastation I mean I don't think anyone could ever comprehend how you know the horrors of war unless they were really there to see it and witness just you know the madness and the chaos and just the aftermath and just I mean what a powerful photo just you know when you stop to consider the fact that that's real you know that, that's real that really was it's real saying right there you know it's not just some photoshop that it's and then there's the back cover, which again has another uh, photo from that era. Then on the inside, we have yet another photo. 
and just total devastation. I mean, it looks like it's like, uh, looks like it's part of the church. You can even see those people walking in there, just like, holy fuck, this was a church at one point in time. Just unbelievable. And on the inside, we have uh, all the uh, usual recording information. Uh, you know, New and Thrones got their thanks list and all that kind of stuff, and uh, Cruel Harvest, which at the time I didn't even actually realize was uh, Todd's project. I actually <laughs> mistakenly, for some reason, thought the Carl Panzram quote was a quote from the artist uh, creating the music, not realizing that Carl Panzram was actually a uh, serial killer, burglar, every bad thing known to mankind kind of guy who uh, went on a rampage back in the early 1900s and then uh, allegedly went so far as told the executioner to uh, hurry up and kill him quicker so he could just leave this fucking world that he hated so much and yeah he was Carl Panzer and was a total misanthrope and just hated everyone hated everything himself and well the quote is anyway I am not the least bit sorry. I have no conscience, so that does not bother me. I don't believe in man, God, nor devil. I hate the whole damned human race, including myself. So, I, I don't know if that quote was included there, because at the time, Todd was uh, angry about something, or what, or just he was uh, studying Carl Panzerim. I don't know, it's just really interesting. But, uh, I remember after I realized that Carl Panzerim was the person behind the project, but uh, it made me kind of look up some stuff, some facts on him. It was really interesting reading because I've always had a fascination with serial killers and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, no, the risen throat side of it. It's very basic uh, recording information stuff. No uh, evil hatred quotes or anything like that. <laughs> then uh, the CD, which uh, again has a really bleak, ominous, shadowy photo. You might see these fucked up. I don't know. <laughs> There's a little mark missing, that's weird. And then, and the tray card was another photo for you to check out there. Oh yeah, well that's supposed to happen. So yeah, really cool stuff, and uh, again, you know, uh, check it out. Get it pretty cheap if you need to, need just to complete your New Ribbon Throne collection or something like that, or just want another, you know, just traditional, uh, highly atmospheric, dark ambient release. Well, you can't go wrong with this one, so shadows over humanity. Whoa, holy shit, did you guys notice I'm wearing a God by Disconnect shirt? I bet you didn't. <laughs> so Bruce recently released this shirt, and uh, I was really thrilled when I got it and just how awesome the artwork is. And uh, it's pretty cool because it really deviates from the style that uh, Simon created for his Crowd Chamber albums. And it really kind of, in general, deviates from, uh, you know, dark ambient artwork in general. When I first saw this, I thought, like, it looked more like... I don't know, like post rock or neo folk looking kind of. It was, it was really different. So, and I, it's pretty cool. I mean, I always appreciate a rebel in a, you know, in a certain genre of music or medium or whatever. It's cool when you know I see people going against the grain because I kind of try to do this my, my same thing myself. But uh, anyway, uh, I believe these shirts are only available through Bruce uh, privately, so you can contact him through Facebook or maybe through Bandcamp. I don't think he's got a post in Bandcamp. Probably should have checked that before I started filming, but whatever, you can go take a look and see if they are there. Uh, if not, contact him. He's selling them for, I believe, it was like $16, $17 plus shipping. And, uh, well, this one fits great on me. I think it looks pretty good, too. And uh, there's even back print. And, yeah, check it out. I make this shit looks good, right? So, yeah. Well worth uh, checking out if you're a fan of God by Disconnect. And if you're not, you should definitely should, because God by Disconnect is a fucking awesome project. And... By far one of the best projects going on the Cryo Chamber label, and uh, other than that, Bruce is a fucking sweet ass dude, and he's a cool guy to chat with, and uh, he deserves our support because he makes fantastic, very awesome, deep cinematic, dark ambient music. And, uh, that's about it, really. I guess uh, I like supporting my fellow dark ambient artists, especially like Ken, and uh, the shirt is awesome, and beautiful, and uh, you should get one too if you like God by Disconnect. Alright, one more thing before we call it an episode. I'm about to release my second album from the House of the Maker side project, and uh, this is an album that's become very personal for me, an album I'm very proud of, and I'm very excited to release it. Uh, uh, when I first started House of the Maker, the main intention was to make more chill, just, you know, kind of back to basics, dark and music. I really wanted to kind of, you know, deviate from that uh, more cinematic style I've been doing with Not to Look In, and, uh, for so far with House of Maker, I've really done that. And I also wanted to kind of bring in more of that, like, 
natural world and feel the record as a nature theme to the music too. Because I've always loved really heavily the like nature theme projects, be it dark ambient music or neo folk or even you know black metal, anything. I love it when there's those nature themes because I love the forest, I love being in nature, and I, you know, any chance I can get to get out of the city for even a couple hours is you know w wonderful and very rewarding to just my well-being and all that kind of stuff. So it's always been really important to me to you know get out of the busy city when I can. And uh, that, you know, the House of the Maker is a project that I really, you know, I hope with the music I can transport people to that place and, you know, take them to that special forest. And, but, you know, also the theme of this album, too, is basically about the, the forest disappearing, about how here, you know, not just in Milwaukee, but everywhere, we keep seeing forests leveled in favor of, you know, grocery stores, gas stations, Walmarts, fucking Ikeas, and just, you know, big condos and all this shit. And I'm just, I, I don't know, I've lived in this city my whole life and I've seen the changes. And I remember there's a certain part of the city in the south side where, like, when when I was when I was a teenager, me and friends would go driving on that side of town. And it was all just farmland, forest, and we would just smoke weed and shit like that. And we would just go through these long drives and it was just open and just there was nothing there other than a few homes and now you go over there and it's all business parks and shopping malls and it's just i don't know shit like that really bothers me i don't i don't know i can really explain why but it just it, it, it really hurts me when i see the natural world being destroyed in favor of all this uh you know mankind human shit that you know and mostly just promotes greed and uh you know all that kind of shit and uh, I know it probably makes me look like I'm like some fucking crazy, you know, tree hugger, and maybe to a point I am, but I just, I have a lot of compassion for the forest and the natural world, and that's what House of the Maker is all about. It's all about taking the listener to that place and uh, making them remember it's there before the forest is gone completely, and, you know, before long, you know, it's, it's not going to happen in my lifetime, but, before, you know, eventually... There's just not going to be any more for us. We're going to be so overpopulated. Everything's going to be buildings. Everything's going to be pavement. And it's just everything natural is going to be gone. That makes me really sad. You know? So anyway, not that rants out of the way. I sort of wanted to write all this on the, the Bandcamp page. But I couldn't, uh, you know, really summarize that uh, so well. I kind of did. But um, the new album is very is about a forest dying and then coming back. And... Uh, uh, this album, like I said, is very personal and be very special, and I'm really proud of this album, so I'm really hoping that, you know, you guys check it out. It's currently up for pre-order, so you can go take a listen to one of the songs there, and I hope you like it. But uh, it's coming in uh, both digital and as a, basically a handmade digipack, and every single digipack uh, is custom. It's custom painted and designed by me, and uh, it comes, you know, just as you see here, with uh, the photograph I took here, this is a photo I took about two autumns ago, I believe, and then there's a, a picture in the back here, and uh, each one is different because each one has a different paint, uh, you know, painting style to it, basically, and different color scheme. So you know, no, no two releases are the same, and you know, you know, you do uh, uh, you know an album by yourself like this, and you know, especially handmade, there's always you know the chances for there being imperfections and all that kind of stuff, but. Uh, I'm really happy with the way everything turned out, and uh, here I'll kind of show this up to the camera a bit closer, is uh, the photograph and the colors and all that kind of stuff. Track listing. And uh, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, here I'll open one up too, just to show you. This album is very personal to me. It's a little, little more melodic in certain parts compared to like say the first album. Each of the insides is painted too, just uh, you know, just. I don't know, I love just doing these kind of sort of abstract, uh, you know, uh, you know, just, I don't know, just swirling them colors until it looks cool, and then, uh, yeah, we have this CDR here, which is, yeah, it's another forest shot. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a project that's really, you know, really special to me, and uh, this album really means a lot, and I'm really, you know, kind of getting my hopes up that uh, a lot of people check it out and really appreciate it, because it is a very tranquil and, uh, I think, you know, Elm, you can use for meditation and yoga and relaxing, reading, sleeping, all that kind of stuff. But it's also enough substance where you can focus it on really taking in everything available. So it is currently up for pre-order. You can grab the digital for four bucks and the, the album itself is only, is only seven bucks. So if you're interested, definitely check it out. And uh, that's about it. That's House of the Maker. And uh, a lot of people checked out the first album and really liked it. So I really hope you guys like this one because I think it's even better. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So check out check it out, House of the Maker.
All right, my friends, that'll about do it for this episode, and I hope you like this shorter format. I know this is uh, maybe different because you're getting used to those 45 to 50 minute episodes, but uh, like I said, I think I'll probably make more episodes if I do it this way, and uh, yeah, um, you know, I cover more ground quicker and feel less stressed for the editing process, which is always just overwhelmingly a long time. Like, it takes me a good whole week to edit everything and just get everything, you know, right and get the sound sounding good and everything, and just, yeah. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed these shorter episodes. And hopefully I'll be back within another couple of weeks or even sooner with another episode. So thank you as always, guys, for supporting Dark Ambience and supporting me in the Dark Ambience scene and uh, the Inner Sanctum in this channel. So, all right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Welcome to the Internet. Hey everyone and welcome to the Internet Sanctum. 